In this video, I'll talk about uh, how to find the angular acceleration of merry-go-round. But also, we have to find out the angular speed of it and the number of revolutions. The given quantity in this case is the moment of inertia and a father who applies the force onto the onto the merry-go-round. So let's start with this one. The moment of inertia of the merry-go-round is 100 kilogram meter square that is given here. And the father is applying a force at the end of a merry-go-round. So the force is 200 Newton. And the force where he is applying is 0.5 meter uh, or 50 centimeter from the axis of rotation. So that uh, R or the distance is 0.5 meter. So once you know the force and the, the distance from the axis of rotation, we can find the torque that is acting onto the, the merry-go-round. So in rotational dynamics, we talk about the torque uh, that makes the objects rotate about an axis. The torque is a vector quantity and the magnitude of the torque is given by Rf sine theta. So for those who know about torque, the torque is R cross F vector. Okay, torque is R cross F vector. So it's a vector quantity and this is the magnitude. And here we are interested in only finding the, the magnitude. And if you want to find the direction, you can find it simply by R cross F vector, which will be in the upward direction. R is 0.5 meter. The force is given 200 Newton sine theta. Here theta is the angle between the uh, R vector and the force. In this case, this is 90 degree. So the sine 90 degree, if you do the math, we'll get 100 Newton meter. That's the magnitude of the torque. So if a father is applying the force, what would be the angular acceleration? So, it, so you you already have studied in classical in linear motion that when we apply a force onto an object, then there is an acceleration, and it is given by the force is equal to mass time acceleration. The same thing happens in rotational dynamics. Here, instead of force equals to mass m a, the force is replaced by the torque. The mass is replaced by the moment of inertia and the linear acceleration is replaced by the angular acceleration and we can calculate the angular acceleration by simply by tau over i that's what it is here okay this is exactly the newton's second law of motion in rotational dynamics torque over i what's the torque 100 newton i is given 100 so if you do the math or 100 over 100 will get one radian per second square. That's the unit of angular acceleration. So it is pretty straightforward to find the angular acceleration. Now let's find out what is the angular speed. When I say the angular speed, that is equivalent to finding the linear speed in linear motion. And we also know that v equals to u plus a t for those who have taken who have studied the the linear motion in this case v is now your omega v naught is your u again a is uh, the angular acceleration so you see there is a very similarity or equivalency between the linear motion and the rotational motion once you know the the formula the equation for linear motion, you can translate that linear motion equation into the rotational dynamics equations. Okay, so the merry-go-round was at rest initially. So the omega naught here is zero. What this zero means here, the merry-go-round was at initially at rest. And the alpha here, we just calculated alpha, which is one. And the time is 20 seconds. So we have to find out 
what is the speed of the merry-go-round after 20 seconds that's what it says here point the angular speed after 20 seconds okay so just finding out the just substituting the time t equals to 20 seconds so after 20 seconds the angular speed of the merry-go-round will be 20 radian per second so in 20 seconds now how many revolution this merry-go-round has made so the father once the father has applied the torque or is applying the torque and in 20 seconds how many revolution it has made how do you calculate the so revolution in rotational dynamics is exactly equivalent to the displacement in linear motion so the theta so in so we need to find out this theta here and how do we do that so again recall the, the equation from the linear motion s is equal to ut plus half at square so in linear motion we talk about the distance and in rotational dynamics we talk about the theta so you see there is an equivalency between and u which is the linear velocity is now replaced by the angular velocity the time is the same thing and here half is now half is a constant and a is the linear acceleration here you have angular acceleration and the time so again if you know this relation you can translate this relation into the rotational dynamics so now let's plug in all the values omega naught is zero now you have to answer me why omega naught is zero because the merry-go-round was initially at rest half as it is alpha alpha value is one we just calculated and again time is 20 square so it will be 200 radian so in 20 seconds the merry-go-round has made 200 radian so we need to now translate this or change the 200 radian into the number of revolutions so if anything that is revolving or, or even rotating about some other axis once it complete one complete rotation or revolution in one complete rotation the total angle is 2 pi or 360 degree so 2 pi radian corresponds to one revolution so one radian is one over two pi revolutions so once i know the radian i simply have to multiply by one over two pi then it gives me the number of revolutions in this case it is 31.8 revolution so that means the merry-go-round makes about 32 revolutions in 20 seconds so this is it for calculating the angular speed the angular acceleration the number of revolutions for a merry-go-round once you apply a certain amount of torque onto it and here we have made a general assumption that there is no any friction force here and the story would be different if we take into account the frictional forces so this is it from this video if you have any questions write down your questions in the comment section below and do not forget to like share and subscribe the channel thank you very much